Hello and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us to discuss Falcon Store Software's Q3 2021 earnings. Todd Brooks, Falcon Store's Chief Executive Officer, and Brad Wolf, Chief Financial Officer, will discuss the company's results and activities and will then open the call to your questions. The company would like to advise all participants that today's discussion may contain what some consider forward looking statements. These forward-looking statements involve risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from the forward-looking statements. These risks and uncertainties are discussed in Falcon Store's reports on Forms 10-K, 10-Q, and other reports filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission and in the company's press release issued today. During today's call, there will be discussions that include non-GAAP results. A reconciliation of the non-GAAP results to GAAP has been posted on Falcon Store's website at www.falconstore.com under Investor Relations. After the close of business today, Falcon Store released its Q3 2021 earnings. Copies of the earnings release and supplemental financial information are available on Falcon Store's website at www.falconstore.com. I'm now pleased to turn the call over to Todd Brooks. All right. Well, thank you, Clark. And I'd like to thank each of you for taking your time to participate in our earnings call today. You know, we certainly have a lot of work to do, but we are pleased with the progress that we're making and the market that we're serving and the value that our solutions deliver to our managed service provider partners and enterprise customers every day. We are a trusted data protection innovator with well over a thousand end user customers and an exabyte of data under management. We enable the world's most demanding managed service providers and enterprises to modernize their data backup and archival operations for the hybrid cloud world, protecting data across on-premise data centers and public cloud environments our solutions then deliver increased data security and provide for quick data recovery, including recovery from ransomware attacks. And our solutions accomplish these while driving down long-term storage footprints by up to 95%. For the year, back in the beginning of 2021, we implemented four key strategic initiatives as we continue our work to reinvent Falcon Store. First, on generating consistent growth by expanding our industry-leading long-term data retention and recovery product line, and by creating new, flexible, and extensible data protection innovations that we believe will drive our growth over the next decade. Second, then on sharpening our commercial and R&D focus related to our business continuity data or driven data replication products to ensure that we're focused on those use cases which are most important to our strategic and largest enterprise customers. Then third, in beginning to generate growth via M&A. And then finally, in continuing in delivering consistent operating profitability. So how are we doing? We're three quarters in to 2021. First, let's talk about gap subscription revenue, area that we've been highly focused on as we're moving perpetual, you know, older fashioned perpetual license um, uh, deals into a subscription recurring revenue model. For the quarter, we, we delivered a 35% year over year increase. Um, uh, and then for the first nine months of 2021, our subscription, our GAP subscription-based revenue has actually increased 54%. So we're doing, we're, we've, we're making great progress in that area as we move um, our licenses from perpetual to subscription. Second then, um, our quarterly GAP total revenue consistency continues to remain a key priority for us. And as you can see, we're not there yet, all right? We're not driving consistent total revenue growth. In fact, in Q3, our total revenue, gap total revenue was actually down year over year, 26%. Here again, as we're 
moving away from perpetual licenses and converting into uh, subscription. Um, but you know, we are remain focused on that, and certainly as we get more and more of our perpetual license converted, um, we will be able to begin driving um, total revenue growth. Um, and it's not just a matter of converting perpetual into subscription, then it's also generating new recurring revenue. And we'll talk about uh, what we're doing there here in a few minutes with our managed service providers. Third then, um, you can see that we're continually continuing to tightly manage our operating expenses. Now this in Q3, the reduction in our gap operating expenses is um, was actually uh, aided by a $633,000 gain that we were able to book because of a litigation settlement that we were very pleased to get behind us. Um, but nonetheless, we're continuing to manage very tightly our uh, operating expenses as we both maximize our legacy business and invest for growth. So bottom line then is net income has remained um, inconsistent also. Uh, despite the fact that we're, um, you know, increasing subscription revenue dramatically and tightly managing our our um, operating expenses, mainly because of total revenue is still lumpy. So we've got work to do, obviously, but we are making really good progress in some of our key initiatives, especially in driving um, increased recurring revenue uh, year over year. As most of you know, we began our reinventions of Falcon Store back in late 2017. And so as we go forward, I think it's important, at least for the time being, to keep a broader view of how we're trending over the longer period. Um, and so this is a, a table that we have shown for the last several um, earnings releases, and we'll continue to do that for the next few, but um, let's just go review a few of these numbers so for net customer revenue retention, which does exclude hardware because we no longer treat hardware. We just treat it as a um, pass through, I should say. In 2017, our net customer revenue retention was 65%. Uh, year to date, 2021, we're at 97%. Our gross margin in 2017 was 78%. Uh, and then year to date so far this year is 85%. Our adjusted EBITDA in 2017 was 7%, year-to-date 28%. Free cash flow, uh, we're making good progress. We're still not every single year delivering a positive free cash flow yet, but we're making good progress. It was a, we burned 2.9 million in 17. Um, we did generate uh, cash in 2020. So far this year, we have burned 800,000, uh, but we're making progress there. Um, and then as it relates to rule of 40, which is simply annual year over year revenue growth percentage plus annual EBITDA percent, that was a negative 14 in 2017. And uh, so far this year is at a positive 21. That's an increase of 35 points on rule of 40. And then finally, um, this, this metric is stabilized significantly, but uh, early on, we made some decisions to pull out of some markets that we considered not to be core anymore to us, uh, as an example, China. In 2017, our total percent of sales from those non-core markets was 23%. Uh, so far, year to date in 2021, it's just a hair over 4%. I expect that that will continue to go down slowly um, as we continue to focus in our core markets instead. And speaking of markets, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that we are really excited about these markets that we are focused on as we look uh, to grow Falcon Store. These three markets are these data protection as a service. In 2019, there was a $12 billion market predicted to grow at a rate of 31% a year to $104 billion in 2027. The hybrid cloud market um, stands at 56 billion in 2020, predicted to grow at a rate of 20% to 204 through 2027. And then finally, the managed I, 
MST services market or um, MSP market. This year is predicted to be 243 billion, growing at an 8% rate to 355 billion in 2026. And so these are fantastic markets for us to be focused in, and we have technologies that play extremely well within these markets. So today, you know, we Falcon Store have over 100,000 organizations and MSPs that then have over an exabyte of data under management using Falcon Store technology. And that technology is protected by 45 patents or patent applications. In the last four quarters, um, we've been able to accomplish some, some really important commercial um, items. Let me kind of go through those. So the first of all, we launched a multi-tenant version of StoreSafe with integration into many of the um, cloud providers. And this is very important. And, and, it's, and it's enabled us to open a, a very efficient new route to market with managed service providers or MSP partners uh, who then serve, you know, in many cases, hundreds of different enterprises with data protection services. Um, second, uh, for those managed service providers, we have launched a, a new, and we just launched this in Q3, by the way, we've launched a new and disruptive per tenant or per MSP customer per month pricing model. And that model then aligns very well with the managed service providers monthly OPEX business model. And we've already seen good response to that. In fact, uh, toward the end of Q3, signed two new MSP partners under that new pricing model. So that's very encouraging for us. And we think that we've um, you know, found a really good, efficient go-to-market market for growth uh, in the form of um, partnering with MSPs. Third, then, we partnered with Hitachi Ventura to um, deliver a new hybrid cloud data protection architecture, architecture powered by StoreSafe and Hitachi's HCP object storage. And although it's not referenced on this slide, um, we're also in the process of, an, and I saw an announcement today, so I'll go ahead and um, announce it uh, here at the, in, on the call, but we've also are partnering with Hitachi on pairing our store guard data replication technology with their mid-range storage devices. And so that will be launching here um, later in Q4 or early in Q1. So excited about some of the things that we're doing with Hitachi Vantera. And then fourth, um, we've, we've um, optimized our integration with AWS archival storage services, and particularly their, their various cloud uh, data storage tiers. Next, then we've gained market share by accelerating replacements of the end of life IBM protect tier solution. And then finally, we've continued to demonstrate the ability of our data protection solutions to scale with several large expansions of multi petabyte deployments across multiple data centers for large enterprises and government installations. And so there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes here at Falcon Store and with our partners and in some new growth markets that we believe are setting us up very well for uh, 2022. Okay, next, um, as we look forward to 2022 and we look forward and we, we focus on growth, we'll be focused in five key areas. First, on continuing to increase our subscription-based recurring revenue um, uh, licenses, including the MSP monthly recurring revenue that we just um, talked about with our new pricing model with MSPs. Second, we'll continue to invest in data protection solutions and efficient routes to market aligned with hybrid data use cases. Third, we'll continue to focus on generating consistent quarterly revenue growth, not just subscription growth, which is doing great, but total revenue growth. 
while maintaining strong profitability, which will allow us to reach an R score of at least 40. Fourth, then we'll, we will continue to seek very targeted M&A opportunities while remaining focused on positive cash flow and operating performance. And then finally, we'll continue to, to um, look to improve our capital structure and liquidity profile. Um, and as, as most of you know, we've, we've made some good strides in that area also throughout um, 2021. So with that, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna turn it over to Brad to provide a more detailed overview of our Q3 and uh, year-to-date financial results. Brad? Thank you, Todd. We closed the three months ended September 30th, 2021 with 3.3 million in gap revenue compared to 4.4 million for the same period of the previous year, a decrease of 26%. Gap total gross profit for the quarter was 2.8 million compared to 4 million for the previous year, a decrease of 29%. Gap total operating expenses were 2.4 million and benefited from a $633,000 litigation settlement credit compared to 2.3 million for the third quarter of 2020, an increase of 4%. We generated GAAP operating income of 449,000 in Q3 2021, compared to GAAP operating income of 1.7 million in Q3 2020, a decline of 74%. And GAAP net income of 374,000 for the quarter, compared to GAAP net income of 1.5 million in Q3 2020, a decline of 76%. We closed Q3 year to date 2021 with 10.4 million gap revenue compared to 11.1 million for the same period of the previous year, a decrease of 7%. Gap total gross profit for Q3 year to date 2021 was 8.8 million compared to 9.8 million for the previous year, a decrease of 9%. Gap total operating expenses were 8.6 million compared to 7.9 million for Q3 year to date 2020, an increase of 9%. GAAP operating income for Q3 year-to-date 2021 was 249,000 compared to GAAP operating income of 1.9 million for Q3 year-to-date 2020, a decline of 87%. And GAAP net income of 450,000 for Q3 year-to-date 2021 compared to GAAP net income of 1.2 million for Q3 year-to-date 2020, a decrease of 64%. Turning now to the balance sheet, we ended the quarter with a cash balance of 3.5 million compared to 3.7 million on June 30th, 2021, and 0.9 million at September 30th, 2020, a reduction of 0.3 million from Q2 2021, and an improvement over Q3 2020 of 2.6 million. In Q2 and Q3 2021, we raised 4.5 million gross proceeds and two public offerings for a common stock at a price of $4.10. We also paid at the end of Q2 1.3 million toward our notes payable balance. Networking capital excluding deferred revenue Contracts receivable, but including redemption value of our term notes, ended at 3.8 million, an improvement of 0.7 million from Q2 2021, and an improvement of 4.3 million from Q3 2020. We've generated 232,000 free cash flow for the last four quarters. <clears throat> we closed the quarter with 3.5 million of cash and cash equivalents, accounts receivable gross of any reserves of 2.4 million, accounts payable and accrued expenses of 1.4 million, and deferred revenue of 5.3 million. On July 27, 2021, we closed a follow-on equity offering, raising $1.2 million of gross proceeds and a public offering of our common stock at $4.10. The support and access to the public markets reaffirms the valuation and market approach we have been pursuing for several years and allows us to pursue more aggressive organic growth and potential M&A. Given our less than anticipated year-to-date total revenue, we are revising the 21 guidance we had previously provided down. Our new guidance will be total revenue of 14.1 to 15.1 million, adjusted EBITDA of 3.5 to 4.5 million, net income of 0.6 to 1.7 million, and our rule of score 40 score will be between 20 and 33. Todd, I'll turn it back over to you for final comments. Thank you, Brad. And you know, as I said in summary, you know, there's some really good things that are going on at Falcon Store. We're clearly steering a reinvention phase, but the progress that we've made in converting uh, a lot of our uh, old-fashioned perpetual licenses into subscription licenses and uh, our our new go-to-market path with MSPs and the new pricing model there is really encouraging. So we got a lot of work to do. 
to be able to show year over year growth in every single metric. Um, but the team's working hard and we are showing good results and we're excited, really excited once again about these markets that we're serving um, and the response that we're getting, especially from our MSP partners. So with that, let me uh, go back to Clark and let's open up for any questions that anyone may have. Yeah, thank you, Todd. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, they can type them in a little question pane to the right. And if you can't see the question pane, you may just see like a big red arrow facing to the right. If you click on that, it'll open up a panel and then you can find the question pane um, or you can actually uh, hit the little button to raise your hand. Uh, but either way, um, if you have a question, uh, please let us know. And we'll wait a few seconds and see if we get any. Okay, Todd, I'm not seeing any questions today, so uh, maybe we should just close it out. All right, great. Well, once again, thanks everybody for taking your time. We'll, we'll look forward to getting together again here in a few months and wrapping up uh, 2020, or I should say 2021. So hope everybody stays well, and thank you again for attending our call. Thank you.